Hey everyone, me Kevin here with another good news update for you on the next rounds of stimulus, this time from the vice president's office. And we'll go into other updates as well regarding mortgage forbearance and a market update. By the way, I've been getting a lot of messages on Instagram and Twitter now from a lot of you who have mentioned that you signed up for Webull to get your two free stocks, but then they sent you a bonus offer after you opened your account saying you could get up to 30 more free stocks if you fund additional money. That was really fascinating to me. So if you have not yet gotten your two free stocks with Webull, use the link down below. This video is sponsored by Webull and of course, life insurance, where you can sign up for life insurance in as little as five minutes. First up, Mark Short, who's Vi Mike P Pence's chief of staff, said in an interview with Bloomberg Radio today that the White House wants Congress to pass another stimulus package by the first week in August before the August recess. This is really, really, really good news because there have been rumors that we might not hear or see another stimulus package until September. That has made us, or a lot of us, like want to start pulling our hair out already because that would be ridiculous that they would literally come back to work after the July recess and then go on another recess without passing a bill. Fortunately, though, this is good news from Bark Short that at least the White House is pressuring Congress to get their act together as soon as they get back to Congress. Mark Short also went on to say that he wants the cost of the next stimulus package to be $1 trillion or less. This is interesting because it aligns with Mitch McConnell's estimates of $1 trillion for the next package, but it's half of what Donald Trump suggested. He, Donald Trump suggested he wanted to see something closer to a $2 trillion package. But in my opinion, this is actually not terrible news. I would rather see a time constraint, like let's get a package moving now and sooner rather than later, and it be a $1 trillion package, then wait and then maybe get a $2 trillion package or a vaccine comes out and there's no package at all, right? So I'd rather see something faster. And remember, $1 trillion is actually a really good amount. Think about this, first of all. Infrastructure is going to be a separate bill, so we don't have to worry about infrastructure, infrastructure spending, excuse me, in that bill. There's also enough money left in the Paycheck Protection Program, so businesses can still get access to additional money by applying for the PPP, and they're even considering repurposing the leftover money to give the first businesses who applied another bite at the apple, another opportunity to draw even more money for those who have already applied and been approved. So this $1 trillion could really go towards other priorities. Mark uh, Short mentioned some of these, you know, he mentioned things like liability protections and, and funding for healthcare and tax incentives, back to work bonuses, and presumably there would also be then funding for things like stimulus checks and unemployment pay, which his discussion somewhat implied that unemployment pay would end up being somewhere around that 400 to maybe $450 per week range, not as high as that $600 per week, but still better than zero. Now, he did also go on to say, and this was good, went on to say that the goal is now to have a bill on the president's desk by August 10th, which that's Lauren's birthday, by the way. She posted a new video. It's kind of cool. It's the new house Meet Kevin bought her. <laughs> Check that out. It's a good video. I'll link it up here down below. Uh, but anyway, the president, so Mark mentioned that the goal is now to have a bill on the president's desk by August 10th, at the very latest, but likely by August 3rd, because the house goes on recess on August 3rd. Uh, the Senate's expected to pass the first round if they draft their own bill. So realistically, we could see this bill passed between the 3rd and the 10th on the president's desk, which is especially great because, look, things have been a little worrying right now. And if another stimulus package passes and it includes stimulus checks, I mean, in theory, they could push a few buttons and we could see new direct deposits, right? Right now, we've heard Mitch McConnell say yesterday that those direct deposits might only go to people maybe specifically hard hit, like those making under $40,000 a year, you know, we might see some sort of ratchet down from that $75,000 stimulus check threshold. Maybe it won't be as much of a ratchet down. Maybe there'll be a negotiation and it'll go down to, I don't know, $65,000. We'll see. But things have definitely turned a little bit, not only in our markets, but in our sentiments. Federal Reserve President of the Bank of Atlanta, Mr. Bostick, warned that he's seeing a, quote, leveling off of the U.S. economic recovery. That's not very good. The Financial Times this morning also reported that Americans have become more pessimistic about the prospects for a quick pandemic recovery. At the same time, we have 49% of Americans believing that the outbreak could get worse. 
over the next month, especially where the spiking is happening. And only 24% of Americans now believe that our economic situation is going to improve in the short term. Now, I know this can cause a lot of anxiety. It causes Lauren and I anxiety as well, not only about our family and our parents, but also our children. Are they going to go back to school? Do we have to homeschool? And everybody has their own unique circumstances as to what creates anxiety. So, you know, we, we really need more communication here from the government. But if there's one thing that I could just, if I could just break for a quick moment and step in and say, uh, you know, in these times of anxiety, one thing that I personally found helped me was like, especially in like March and April when things were like really scary, I thought to myself, okay, what can I do now to try to at least plant some financial seeds of success going forward? And even though it can feel really painful to do it, try to put some money away, like either save money, put some money in stocks, uh, think about or pl start planning to buy your first home. Uh, you know, if you still have a job and you can qualify and if you can't, see what you can do to put some money away and, and maybe invest in an index fund. Maybe uh, put a little bit of money into fractional shares of a safe company like Apple or Tesla or, or Amazon uh, and, and try to try to build your wealth in the long run. Because remember, in America, it's people with assets who get bailed out first. We're going to be talking about mortgage forbearance in just a moment, but uh, that's generally what you see happen in America. It's, it's the people without assets who tend to get left behind. And so whatever you can do to use these times of fear and anxiety to maybe convince yourself like, okay, maybe, maybe I'm going to try it. Maybe I'm going to get involved a little bit and just get my feet wet. You know, I'll buy a stock. I'll buy two stocks or I'll start thinking about buying a house one day. I'll buy something smaller than I can afford, you know. Uh, that, that, that would be a good start. But anyway, let's, let's keep moving on in the news updates. Sorry for Trojan horsing that here. Uh, the government, by the way, has also now announced another $1.6 billion in federal aid to Novavax, another manufacturer of a possible vaccine. This $1.6 billion is to help fund clinical studies and establish large-scale manufacturing of doses. They're trying to get to 100 million doses by the end of the year. The stock immediately jumped 37%, and it's currently up about 31%. The government's already funded multiple companies like this. Again, it's businesses and, and companies that get the big bailouts, right? But I get it. They're working on a vaccine. Companies like Regeneron, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, Moderna. All of these companies have received millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in funding to try to help get us a vaccine. In other news, about one in five adults have either moved themselves or moved into somebody else's home due to the pandemic. A lot of younger people or, uh, you know, poor Americans have been disproportionately affected by this, partially because college campuses have been closing and people are sort of consolidating households. Which, speaking of households, the research firm Black Knight reported that renewals for mortgage forbearance are slightly down in their first 90-day renewal period. We're now at 8.6% of all active mortgages in forbearance, down from 8.8%. Now, remember my opinion on this. this. This is not necessarily a sign of distress in the market. This is really a sign of homeowners taking the free stimulus money available to them. Because remember, if you defer 12 months worth of payments for up to 30 years, it's kind of like taking free money because if you invest the money, you can basically double that money, pay what you owe, and you're still left with what, what you deferred basically uh, within 10 to 15 years pretty consistently. So this is basically free money. I talk about those principles, by the way, for beginners uh, and anybody looking to learn about stocks and money and the basics of finance in my money and finance course, where we really go from like zero to 60 on that one uh, in a nice paced uh, environment. But anyway. Uh, this is this. If you have not yet taken mortgage forbearance, I am bullish on you taking mortgage forbearance. It really it helps you build an emergency fund. It helps you protect yourself, and maybe it helps you start building more assets. Regarding tenants, there's only talk of expanding or extending eviction protections. Remember, tenants have been mostly left behind in this pandemic, and it's kind of sad. Uh, really, tenants have been left to fend for themselves in terms of go get unemployment or go negotiate with your landlord. But otherwise, you're accruing more and more debt every single month in back rent if you're not paying your rent. It constantly saddens me how little tenants get support from the government relative to, again, people with assets, homes and stocks and, and, and businesses. And you can kind of see a theme here in all my stimulus videos because it's true. Like this is how people are building wealth.
Now, uh, last thing here in regards to the market, we're seeing a little bit of a pullback today, which creates a little bit of an opportunity to maybe go shopping for some stocks. Obviously, you could use the platform Weeble and pick yourself up some red stocks. We got plenty of red to choose from today. I personally would stay away from the more speculative ones like the Nikola, who's getting hammered, or the retail and restaurant stocks. And I'd look for something that is red, but is a little safer. That could be Target, that could be Redfin, that could be Etsy, uh, you know, even Chipotle's in the red today, uh, which is fascinating. But anyway, uh, here are some interesting opportunities for you. Uh, keep in mind, if you have not yet watched my stock video, I highly encourage you watch that. I will link it up here or down below. It goes into all of my thoughts on which particular stocks I'm bullish on right now and what my strategy is, especially staying away from some of these more vaccine stocks. And to top this all off, China has now confirmed one case of the bubonic plague. The patient is apparently in stable condition, but China issued a level three alert, which apparently warns citizens to report dead animals and suspected plague cases in people who have high fevers for no reason. The bubonic plague, by the way, was also known as the Black Death, and it killed 50 million people in the 14th century. And then in a second wave 500 years later, killed another 12 million people. At the same time, Zimbabwe is shutting down its stock market to combat rampant devaluation of its currency because people in Zimbabwe are actually fleeing to the stock market to protect their wealth. Every time the economic situation gets worse in Zimbabwe, the stock market goes up. And so the government decided, you know what? We're just gonna shut down the stock market. Too bad they don't have a Jerome Powell who could just print some more money, although maybe that would just make things worse. They do, though, have a central bank governor, like their version of a Jerome Powell, who once claimed that God told him where to set interest rates. Well, there you have it. There's your update for so far today. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing, and folks, we will see you next time.